This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. The queen bumblebee has been hibernating in her special place underground. Soon she will leave. Aeronautical engineers used to say, bumblebees cannot fly. It's a wrong design. But they can, of course, and can prove it. The flights of the bumblebees have taken them across our gardens, countryside and farmland for ages. And today they are facing changes right across Britain, from the oldest tractors to the most modern technology, plus chemicals. Food for us, perhaps, but nothing for insects in a green desert rendered deadly by pesticides. Certainly no future for a bumblebee down here in the monoculture. This will be a story of winning and losing for the lovable bumblebee, which proved some of us wrong and we hope can also prove bad news can be turned to good with a lot of help from its friends. Over the generations, wildlife has tried to adapt to us, but nature's network is increasingly pushed to the edge of a field. Be it a grey wagtail, or insect, or the plant it depends on, it's crucial. Just being a bumblebee has its challenges, not just flying accurately, but surviving through the year and coping with a changing food supply often caused by us for good and bad. In this bee movie, we'll follow the seasons with a newly hatched queen as she hunts for nectar, energy, through the prolific summer to the fading autumn. Now that's a familiar plot, but along the way there'll be many little dramas for her. Well, for example, Well, would you call a bumblebee bulky? Well, a crocus might. There are lightweights here too, competing for pollen, honeybees. Bees generally run the planet, and us. Fact, as we'll see. Signs of flowers to come. Snowdrops and crocus are very welcome sites, not only to insects, but to us who plant them and distribute them far and wide. So that seems to be a win-win. That's if you can get up from a collapsed crocus. And there we go. To the next best thing. The daffodil flowers have arrived. So in we go. By now, around Easter, the cold-blooded insects get enough warmth to get going. It's hard work and they need to build their strength up. 
Being a bee on the early flowering celandines can be a struggle when the March winds blow across the ladies' smock and the patches of woodland still bare above. This means those flowers with their dependent insects receive plenty of light now in the lengthening days. Soon brimstone butterflies will emerge from hibernation in the ivy on those trees and flutter under the blossom along the lane and over primroses and ladies' smock. Later they will be shaded out as they compete for sunshine along the roadside verges. A verge is a line of life, a corridor, a lifeline for plants and insects and increasingly important as the countryside is farmed. These narrow havens grow anemones and celandines and dandelions and primroses. Wild flowers, which also reach our gardens and may be called weeds or manipulated to a domestic version, though these tend to be rather sterile as far as insects are concerned. Which one to choose? From a bumblebee's point of view, in full flight and still needing to fuel up, it can't afford to fumble about and waste energy trying to get some more. It's what electric car people call fuel anxiety when the battery runs low. There are lots of tiny flowers on offer here. Some over, some in bloom, some to come. In this case, they're available in a range of colours, mainly pale blue and pink, with spotted leaves. Now here's a real expert. If our bumblebee is a bit of a bomber flyer, then this guy is a fighter, actually a bee fly. He can manoeuvre with brilliant precision, take off and land vertically with a flexible undercarriage and has a probe up front like a tiny flight refueling plane. Only cleverer, a mere insect, some might say. This diversity of colours and shapes is not just to appeal to us in the garden. It's a deliberate attempt by apparently passive blooms to tempt in insects in the sexiest possible way, fertilising with a difference with pollen and nectar, insect pulling. A periwinkle seduces our fighter pilot perching on its undercarriage. The narcissus is tempting through the periwinkle jungle as a white-tailed bumblebee bumbles on its apparently clumsy way. The dandelion is stripped of its appeal by a male bullfinch, now in April, with chicks to feed, somewhere out there in this garden of opportunity. It's a jungle out there, through our gardens, but across the country it can be very different, effectively a desert, a green one, to feed us and help farmers earn a living. It's a tricky dilemma. These are the only cowslips that can survive here, on that edge. But all here. Now for some good news. Absolutely the very opposite of that man-made, man-cured monoculture. Here, also man-made, or at least man-helped, so that nature can do what comes naturally, with some help from a friend. All sorts grow here, around this old cottage and bumblebees are invited to sample the wild garlic. And the local bees are based in their own local abode, a beehive.
Along the nearby country lane is a river, adding diversity to the area. Again, the opposite of sameness imposed on the place. For example, in this one view here, there's water and wetland plants, hedges, woodland, an orchard and mature trees. With all that comes a great variety of insects and birds that may feed on them, like robins, sparrows, thrushes and blackbirds. The bumblebees as a group include 24 species. Some are threatened by land use, some are very rare, as we'll see later. Hopefully we can learn to live with them. Guess what? This is a red-tailed bumblebee. Perhaps looking for a home, in a home. These have found one. Workers look after the nest. The queen, so busy amongst the snowdrops earlier, would have gathered more nectar and pollen, stored in little wax pots. She lays her eggs nearby. The queen lies on top of them and vibrates to keep them warm. Fancy that. The workers really do work hard, low and high in fact, and now in early summer there's plenty to choose from. Wild strawberries are the food plant of 51 species of bugs and butterflies. From ground level and lawn level, amongst bugle, up through the white dead nettles using that amazing tongue. Different bumblebees have different lengths of tongue, six millimetres to 20 millimetres. It's lilac time. The patchwork of the village, including the house with the nest and all the options for supplying it. Gardens, veg patch, country lane, even flower boxes right in the village by the pub. Perfect diversity. But this nearby is not. Just outside the village of diversity is apparently a green and pleasant land. Green, yes, but for an insect, a bumblebee, it's definitely unpleasant. There's much more on your lawn than in this field of rye grass, a crop. There are less hedges than there were, expanding fields to grow industrial crops like oilseed rape which must then be protected by pesticides which can kill bumblebees. Some of these have been banned, but big makers like Monsanto, Syngenta and Bayer help themselves and farmers, they say, but not bumblebees and honeybees. Even the vestiges of wildness are sprayed into oblivion by herbicides, which may then contaminate our food as well as destroying the fragments of home for wildlife, like the wasp beetle, mimicking a wasp's movements. And it's not just in Britain. Across in Germany, there's been a 76% decline in flying insects and a 55% decline in farmland bird populations across Europe. Plants, insects, birds and us, it's a scary situation. A catastrophic silent spring, some say but it can be solved to some extent. And here's how. In your garden, even at a window box. And a real wasp, not always welcome, but part of life in the undergrowth. One of many wildlife documentaries that have tried to bring the public's, farmers, even big corporations attention to these increasing problems. So what more can be done? Variety is the spice of wildlife, especially for bumblebees. Now in June, wild rose time, frantic.
Back at the nest, the queen will be producing yet more workers, daughters to begin with, who help raise more grubs, males later, drones, and new queens for next year. So this doesn't help a barren field with only one possibility, what many would call a weed. It takes energy to find and collect more to take back to the nest. It's a bit of a balancing act, but this is a better bet. As ever, diversity is the answer. Buttercups, moorhens, yellow iris on the local village pond. An inviting landing strip promises nectar and pollen at this pretty takeaway, with a convenient addition just a buzz away. Plenty of honeysuckle to choose from in a garden hedge, but which individual flower is the right one to check? In other words, worth the effort and the energy. Now, remember that roadside verge back in early spring, covered in anemones and primroses and celandines, blooming in the sunshine before being shaded out by leafy trees. But whiz on now, June, to a very different scene which some say is verging on a crime against nature. This is what's destroyed. Wildflowers. Orchids now reduced to fragments of countryside. Roadside verges could be a solution if more care is taken. And of course that would help the insects too. This won't. For safety reason, it's important to clear places and councils do this predictably every year, sometimes several times, despite the expense to the taxpayer. And certainly at the expense to the wildlife that may find sanctuary in these remaining lifelines along our roads and lanes. This is the age of farming power. The State of Nature report published in October 2019 assessed a major decline in British wildlife, mainly due to the impact of modern farming, reducing the countryside to tiny islands. Farmers are often blamed, but they are only trying to do their job. But in the particular case of bees and bumblebees, there could be a really serious backlash. So are we cutting off the very branch we're living on? If they don't spray to protect their crops from weeds and pests, their income may suffer. But it will suffer a lot more if insects as a whole are not recognised as how important they are in the natural scheme of things. Before. after. Could be a nature reserve like this one in Somerset by a lake. Just the place for meadowsweet in summer. Undrained, unfarmed, a true sanctuary for all and sundry. And here's another sanctuary perhaps, just down the road. Not many bears around Jew Magna, but there's plenty of bumblebees because the pub provides the right menu. 
both at street level or up there with the only bear in town. In fact, not only bears and swans or signs of them can be part of our lives wherever we want and they want too. Just look around or behind you and there could be a bee working on your behalf. But that's a serious question into the future, as we'll see. The flowers they help pollinate and the gardens they help decorate are worth their weight in gold. That's not much for a bee or a butterfly, you might say, but actually for bees, it's a massive fortune worldwide. More locally, your garden is a gold mine, a place where you can be amazed by the symbiotic ingenuity of flowers and bees in behavior, design and color. Connecting. Collecting. Part of village life with ducks on your roof or with ducklings below included. Garden centres have indeed become centres of garden owners right across the country. They're big business, selling more and more vegan stuff and all kinds of specially bred flowers. But some of these are effectively sterile as far as insect pollination potential is concerned. Though from Australia originally, the bottle bush is a useful introduction. Others, like Himalayan balsam, may help bumblebees and do spread far and wide by shooting out its seeds by water and then taking over. They may look pretty, but introduced plants are always a risk. So once again, herbicides are sprayed on the British landscape and poisons are put into the ecosystem, including ponds, streams and rivers. Now here's a chemical free image organic farming and a community farm supplying local people with the real natural thing. Inside polytunnels pollination buzzes along with marigolds helping by deterring pests. Tomatoes, cucumbers and much else are the fruits of labour by this fuzzy, busy workforce. This is just a hint of what may come unless we work more with nature rather than trying to dominate it. Building a better world is possible, but we can only achieve that if, for example, insects can help too. So, we must help them. That's the deal. A major factor is farming of all sorts, from both ends, apparently, with these calves in Somerset. Dairy and meat are in the firing line these days, as is the health of people and the planet. But would you believe it would collapse if insects disappear, which they are doing? Words like Armageddon and apocalypse, not now, appear in reputable media. A third of world's crops depend on bees, flies and others for pollination. Absence on car windscreens are a worrying clue. So what can be done? They're actually quite cute when you look at them. I think so. Yeah. I always think about Brian from the Magic Roundabout. Rather appropriately, <laughs> Daisy Headley and her team can help with a bee walk. Part of a census with the Bee Conservation Trust, lottery funded, to be or not to be. Well, bumblebees, that's enough bees for the moment in this bee movie. All in a good cause, though. So she's given us some maps. Yeah, so this is her boundary, so we've got fields, not that many around that way, so we might as well head down from the field. Um, yeah, it's all part of the picture, 
What's in there could be in a plant and in a bee and in a cow as milk or meat. This is hands-on research. It's very difficult to focus. Quite a few really she's, pale common colors. Yeah, she's really buff, isn't she? She is, she's very buff. With pretty no, nails. No, 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 Just put her though. back and she'll carry on. Nectary, yeah, right here, that, as they call it. it. She can carry half her chubby body weight in nectar and pollen. And soon a tiny temporary backpack that can help the farmer monitor his fields. Maybe even a camera later. That's a real bee movie. A bee line. No, no, come on, no more, please. Then a cow line, back to calves, waiting in the barn. That's a lot of milk on the hoof. And agriculture dominates our countryside and affects everything there. But maybe, just maybe, there are solutions. Some farmers have earned more than £9,000 a year if their land is ideal for bees and butterflies and hoverflies too. Up to four billion migrate to Britain every year and produce enough larvae to eat 10 trillion aphids green fly. Like bumblebees they pollinate widely and like bumblebees too they don't sting. Winners and losers, it could go either way. Here's some good news. The very rare shrill carder bee has been discovered at appropriately Victory Wood a conversion to a flower meadow, a tiny awkward ballet on a planet in trouble. Our queen bee will be undergrounded again for her winter hibernation, hopefully into next year, maybe. Mind you, there's no plan B or planet B, sorry.